This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. What is going on, people? So we are up here on this roof doing this PM. While we were doing the PM, we had a quote to do. We had somebody find a few leaks here on some of these uh, hot gas uh, reheat valves. And we had a couple of these bad and a couple of those bad. So, you know, you get it done, you pull a vacuum on it. It don't pull down very well. You run your battery dead, nothing working out good. So you're like, oh, let's pull out the ultrasonic. Now I've not been too overly impressed with the ultrasonic, but it did its job today. Usually small leaks that don't have any type of turbulence, you're not gonna hear, even if you get it wet. You come over here, you yank the blower out. Where's the horsies? Well, there we go, the weight of it's 105 pounds. That's probably why we had a few issues. So you come over here and you're like, oh, looky there, I can hear it. I can hear it, maybe it's this coil right there, which is the reheat coil. Look at this, how Linux designed this. You can't get to the back side of that. You know why? Because Linux decided to run their condenser coil the other direction, this way. Guess what, there's no way to get into the back side. Yep, that was really thought out. I see why we used to sell residential crap and not the commercial crap from Linux. Holy crap, this stuff is garbage. You know how many, how many compressors we've lost? Each one of these units have four compressors. We've lost at least seven or eight compressors to these belts supposedly keep loosening up. Now, yeah, that's a maintenance issue, but you would think that the freeze protection would work and you can only quote so much and then people don't approve it. This is what, I, what happens. So we yank this out, have no choice because you've got all this piping like this. Horrible, horrible design. You can see right there, it's actually in this coil. So that's what we're gonna be working on. And you can see when you spray this, it's happening in a couple spots. So let's get rid of these bubbles like that. Watch what happens here. You got it coming in over here, a little here and a little here. So there's a couple of them. I'm hoping it's in this first loopy doop here. If it's in the first loopy doop, we might be able to get in there. So I'm gonna get in there some pliers, see if we can yank out some of the fins, because you know this coil is probably $10,000. And you know it's not under warranty because they're usually lucky if they give you a one-year warranty on it. That's what we're doing today, guys. You ready to get started? Let's go. Okay, we got the torches up here. Now, the way I've always done this is usually I just go into the fins, pinch, turn, twist, pull. Yeah, it may hurt it a little bit, but you know, you already got a leak. There's only so much you can do with it. I've kind of made a little bit of a mark here. Some people use razor blades, some people use a torch. Uh, I've seen different ways. We may have to try the razor knife because this is just not a lot of room in here at all. So you kind of grab a whole pull twist and then get that out of the out of here so that it ain't getting in your drain. Got my Gilligan hat on here so that kind of shade us from some of that sun that just came back out. Kind of kind of think that it's gonna be rainy and then all of a sudden, kaboom! You know, the best kind of knife the one that you find somewhere and you didn't have to pay for it okay so yeah some of y'all probably like well you know i would just had them get a new coil yeah well i don't know what part of the world you live in but around here nobody wants to spend no money they'll just leave it go plus you know you told them hey here's some things you need to do and uh now you've got some other problems so it don't look very good either So as you can see here, kind of shoot that across there like that. Look at that. That whole pipe there is just plumb garbage. I think it's only hopefully on that one particular one. We're gonna do a skim coat across there. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to have a crap load of uh, nitrogen. So it takes quite a bit to pump this up. It's 12 pounds on each system almost. And that bubbling is going on right now at, it's at 82 PSI right now. It started out at 176. It appears that that is probably it. <sighs> Cause it's not bubbling now. The key to this is to get the heat all the way wrapped around it. 
um, and have that aluminum completely out of there. Uh, we'll clean it up with a little brush here. Mainly what we're doing is kind of going in behind it and kind of crushing down the aluminum fins, trying to get it so I can get that heat all the way and the rod wrapped all the way around it. I mean, this is, this is really a, a freaking Hail Mary, if you want to call it that. Um, if this don't work, then they can just not have cooling on this particular section or they can spend the money and buy a whole new coil, which I'm sure would be stupid money. Um, but like I said, some other company out of town, as usual, some big architect, you know, designed this whole building, uh, picks his little goons from wherever he's from and then has them come in, do the work, and then they leave and never come back. Don't have to warranty it, don't have to do anything. So that's pretty much how this whole, whole thing came about. We'll see how that goes. It kind of kind of ain't a good thing if uh, you uh, get aluminum in there with the rod. So that's why it's kind of important to get that out of there. I don't have my tripod and I don't feel like going to get the GoPro. You're lucky I'm even showing this because this looks like crap and it looks like hackery, but you know, this is the kind of stuff we end up doing. We're going to come in here and we're just going to burn off any of that soap. We're just going to go ahead and get this all preheated up. I can see right there we've got a couple pieces of aluminum. So we're going to get that cleaned out of there. Like I said, can't do this with one hand. I doubt I got everything, but we did it pretty much just ran a bead across it. Yeah, this, this looks like crap. I mean, there's just only so much you can do with it. Put a little in there. I don't want to get too crazy because like I said, I doubt it's just that one. Yeah, it's, it's worse. Yeah, I think we're going to have to try to make a guess at which one it is and just bypass the whole loop. It's, it's one of them things. It's just a total mess. Oh, there's a hole right there in front. Okay. Yeah, it burnt right through that one there. Look at that. Whoops. I suck. Look at that. Right. Oh, there's some back there still doing it too, ain't there? Okay, there's some there doing it. There's that big honking hole right there. That whole freaking thing's garbage. I'm gonna see if I can figure out which one that is going down and go back, just cut it out. I mean, if you look at it, it comes through to this one right here. This distributor tube right here comes in. Okay. And then if you look at it, it comes out over here, and this is another section. I would think since that's the top one in, this is the top one coming out. I mean, I could technically get rid of that whole loopy dupe because I have no clue if it goes to that one or down that one or what it is. It's probably one of these two. You know, you could theoretically unhook it from there and then plug it into there. I have no room at all in here to get my torch in here, hardly at all. Very, very reduced uh, area to work with. I think I might just go ahead and pinch this one here and pinch that one there and see if we got it and call it a day because we're wasting a lot of time and one little bitty section there out of all this other is probably not going to be that bad on it. You know, obviously it may, uh, it's going to reduce the evaporator uh, surface coil, but what are you going to do otherwise? Let's just count them up here. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that goes to a new section. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Rocket science at its best. I've undone those before. You've seen me do it on one of those little coils, but it is what it is at this point. And we got 12 units to service yet. So yeah, I know I'm a hack. I'm a total hack. <sighs> See that you just ignore it and don't write it down. You just leave it not work. I've seen that happen. Go in here like that that one and then same thing here with this and okay so I just uh, scanned it with that nothing didn't hear anything we ended up doing brazing over the end of that and we ended up brazing over the end of that which pretty much filled it in as good as you can because at the edge corner it's real sharp it's not like you can really suck it into the into the the, the piece as well we got 90 pounds on it, which ain't a lot, but that's all it took to find the other one. It does not appear to be bubbling that I can see with the light out here the way it is. And out in there. So, I mean, that, as bad as it may look or seem or whatever, I'll just uh, wire tie that up there like that. It worked. We lost a total of five total pipes going across three eighths. Not much more you can do with it. Um, 
as bad as that whole section was there, it kind of scares me, but you know, it, it would have been a lot quicker to do that off the bat. But like I said, when we first had it, it appeared that it was that, but that's the problem with noise. I mean, it just travels right through the coils. So let's go ahead and throw it back together and pull back on this thing, go ahead and get the vacuum going. You can see the crap that was in the system there. That's uh, what was in the uh, reheat valve. So I'm sure this is gonna be really good, really good. Got a new dryer on it. You can tell other problems must have existed because those don't look like factory welds. Okay guys, this little gizmo here is a valve core depressor tool, which I've used another brand for a while. It's so much smoother than the other one that I had. So this is the one I've been using for the longest time. As you can see, it's got double O-rings and all that, but it just does not screw on smoothly like the Appion does. So uh, definitely, something worth looking at. And then I purposely bought these ones here that you're seeing right here to not clamp down, which I regret. This one here, when you back it up, it actually clamps off, so it holds the refrigerant in there. So this thing here is, watch how smooth this is. It's so, so smooth. No problem at all. Tight. And put on our micron gauge, and then we'll depress it. I've been trying to wear out the CNDs before I over to my Appion. I just, I never like having a bunch of half worn out tools. I like to completely, completely wear them out, which these ones here aren't that old, but I've already had problems with the seal popping out and giving me some issues with that. So we're gonna just go ahead and wear this one out a little bit more. Before I switch over to that, however, the Appion part there, I love that. And I use those there when you have these big max core tools that you can't remove the valve core. Um, just makes it simpler. It allows you to get that free flow, full flow, which was the whole reason why they designed it was so the factory could do a quick disconnect. They just pop, pop. I mean, it looks just like a uh, car. Oop, there she goes. I didn't realize we had a convenience plug up here. So these units are 460 volt. I didn't want to, uh, and I ran my batteries down yesterday. So I was like, well, we'll just use the regular pump then when I seen that. And I thought I was going to pull longer duration because there was an issue where basically they approved to replace the compressor but didn't approve to come back and do these other repairs. So it's set now for a whole year. And uh, now we come back finally and that's why I went ahead and replaced the new dryer with another new dryer because it had sat there empty for all that time. And there she goes, oh, right to sleep. Uh, she's starting to drop, there we go. So as usual, True Tech Tools. Save 8% with promo, survival. Pick you up these Appion valve core tools, the depressor, it's uh, silky smooth. Uh, you can get the valve core tools too. Cause like I said, I'm kind of turning my back on CND uh, just because they aren't holding up a whole lot better. They've been really good, um, but I'm kind of the point where uh, Appion, uh, they, they've always been smoother. They screw on, screw off so easy. And looky here. I mean, still best, best vacuum gauge on the market, bar none, is the blue vac. I mean, I've got the other one still. I got this one for the Bluetooth, just so I can uh, do reports. Look how fast that thing's pulling down with just one hose, even on a, a unit that's uh, only 12 pounds. Uh, something to say too, I got the new new uh, umbrella by by Subco, because um, that one, this is the old one. Once again, wearing it out, so I've got the new one from True Tech also. It's black, it's a lot prettier looking because you know us guys, we want to look cool when we're on the roof, but you can actually keep cool by having that uh, umbrella. At, uh, when that sun comes out, man, it goes from cool to just roasting here before you know it. So definitely take care of yourself. That umbrella for all the more costs, I think it's like 60 bucks or 80 bucks, something like that, I forget. You would think it's not, it's too much, but I mean, where you're gonna find a magnet that's that strong. I mean, it, you get super windy, you're gonna have problems, but that's just normal. But yeah, we're, we're yanking down pretty quick here. Okay, I got the guy up here helping me to get that in there, which we slid it on in. It's kind of amazing that they come up with fairly smart ideas like this, and then they just blow it with other stuff. Got everything mounted back up, back into place. This kind of is haphazardly thrown together the way they did that. I mean, they got some stuff on there to help keep it from rattling together the shrink tube stuff. Uh, cleaned up a lot of that aluminum so it doesn't get sucked in the blower and then blown down and blow into some of the products. Got her in there. That'll make it a lot easier now. And that's some pretty thick stuff. I think we'll be fine. 
you've got the outside and then you got the inside so i'm pretty confident with that and then when you actually do a correct crimp you don't have any stray wires so we should be good got the new belt on there it's a little tight but you can pound as far as you can go i don't get how these belts i don't know if somebody's tightened them up or what because these are 62s yeah, the x62 which is i wrote in here a long time ago sheaths aren't bad i mean they look they look like they might have wear but really they're pretty smooth all the way across same thing here we are down i valved off once Let's see where we're at we're at 569 valve off here and you can see how our leak rate is dropping which means we're slowing down which means if it keeps on slowing down and eventually stops out, then we have moisture in the system or refrigerant and not a leak. If it keeps on going, you got a leak. So yeah, we need to pull a little longer, see whether it comes up a little bit more. Continue to let it do its thing. There's not a whole lot else you could do on it. Yeah, you can always sell them a new coil. The coil's not under warranty. Uh, not obviously wasn't my first choice to do that. Yeah, we got a little bit of hole in that uh, first coil, which is just a reheat coil. The air's gonna pass through it. Their biggest issue right now is not maintaining them. We got compressors frying themselves because it's flood back. Um, like I said, they, I had one when I went around, it was so loose that uh, you had a frozen line coming back and then, you know, all the other ones weren't. So it may be something else. It's hard to say, I haven't gotten to those yet. Okay, we've been pulling for another hour or so, and we're pretty much bogged out. There's no gas ballast on that cheap pump, so... Yeah, we may just have gotten it as good as we can get it. Comes time, you just gotta say, okay, we got it. As good as you're gonna get it. So you can see already it's dropping down to the two, so it's just wet. Okay, we're dumping her in. We're gonna leave it a little shy on the charge. So we went ahead and put that last half pound area in there. So we're about 425, 423, 49 degree evaporator. Basically, that's about right for the fact that we're running about 80 some degrees downstairs in the production area. They are doing a lot of flow molded designs, stuff like that. So uh, got the new contactor on there and got a new condenser fan motor in there, which everything on my quote was wrong. Uh, this was supposed to be supposedly on the other one it's supposed to be compressor number two but it was really number one got the capacitor on there it's just been a total hodgepodge of a mess because this was like a year ago that this was quoted and they finally got around to it so it's finally done belts are brand new and tight and new filters condenser coils are completely cleaned out as you can see that is how much dirt was in it so we got quite a bit of that crap out and that's how they all were but uh, yeah, it heads a little higher. This also has reheat on it. That's what this valve here is. So basically instead of taking it to the condenser, they take it into a, that coil that you've seen on the inside. It's uh, right after the evaporator coil and that uh, adds heat into it so that you can dehumidify the space, which there's already so much heat load in there. I don't know why they even wasted their money on it, but whatever, I suppose maybe in the winter time. But I'm gonna check uh, suction pressure on a couple of these other ones here that aren't, uh, don't feel very cold. And I guess, you know, once again, that company that installed all this stuff, put swill T's in there with fan cycle controls and just lost the charge on almost everything out here. 40 swivel T's, because there's 40 compressors. Just absolutely amazing. Uh, why they wouldn't have just went ahead and put an economizer on it. It's probably why they would have lost the uh, quote, probably, who knows. All right, I see what I did wrong. So I had my, my panel, even though it was at a degree angle here, it still was blocking enough wind it's already down to 403 on 420 something. Oops. Yeah. Now we're 116. It's about 85 out here. So 95, 100, 515. We're 30 degrees over ambient. Still dropping. Everything's working out fine. We're not, you know, no problems with our suction. So they just pretty much, you know, let you know that we was able to do that. Not that I wanted to do that with the coil, but what are your other options? So, all right, guys, got the cool hat on trying to like protect myself away from the sun. Till next time, later.